Get out you weapons. Just on the shitter. I pissed through the fucking toilet seat. Pisses all over the fucking floor. Oh, I'm fucking fuming. Anyway, I thought the logical thing to do would be call a podcast. So, Jeeps in your shakes, give a fucking heap. Bloody brilliant. Beers. Yeah, good thanks. Bloody brilliant. Beers. Blowing the froth off. So yeah, welcome back to the Bloody Brilliant Beers podcast brought to you by Bluebet. That's Clutch, I'm Darcy. We are the Bloody Brilliant Beers. We started out reviewing craft beers on Facebook and now we bring you the conversations that you'd more than likely hear from the front bar at your local. And Clutzy, where are we coming to the frothies from this fine evening? Well, I think for the fifth time this week, um, I'm here at the Caxton Hotel. Back at the Caxton. Happy <laughs> Monday, baby, if you're yeah, listening. Yeah, uh, it's good to be back. This is our Blowing the Froth Off episode uh, where we hear from you guys, the frothies. So... If you want to get in touch with us, leave us a message, tell us a funny story or something, give us a call on 07 3389 Boom, he's nailed it again. Congratulations to you, Das. Um, I'm incredibly stoked to be here with dry pants, unlike our, our frothy that's calling and pissed on his pants through the toilet <coughs> seat. We've all been there, though. We um, have. It does happen, and uh, it's, it's always good to hear from you. Something not to be ashamed of, either. That's it. Um, bit of housekeeping, maybe, before we kick off? Yeah, a little bit of housekeeping. First of all, you'll notice the walls behind us are bare. Um, we are still coming to you from the Cax, and they're simply painting the walls this week. There's a little bit of Queensland behind us. Still. So, uh, the... F- the Everything will be coming back, but yeah, they're just doing a few renovations. So please, uh, pardon the, the the walls. They look a bit weird up here with none of the jerseys up, but yep. they'll be back to their, their for, former glory very soon. In fact, yep. it'll be even more glorious. It'll be so much more glorious. Yep. Imagine if they painted it all maroon. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, that'd be so rude. Well, I actually don't know what colour they are. Yeah, we, we have no, we idea. no idea. That's why there's a thing called uh, speculation. Yep. Um, that's currently happening right now. Absolutely. Um. And the other thing is, you might have heard, you know, a few people throwing some stuff around on the internet about potential fights and things like that yeah. coming up. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll have our moment. We'll have our say eventually. Yeah, we've, we're actually just letting everyone else get their sort of words out first. Yeah, we'll have the final word. Because we know that you save the best to last. Exactly. So, and yeah, we could do a bit of feel girl and have the final word. That's so. it. So tune in Wednesday to hear all about that. Yep. Um, before we start, I'm going to take my jumper off and just have a slice of this little pizza, mate. Yeah, Give me idea. one second. Good idea. Let's get into the first call. Good afternoon. Oh, what the fuck time? What time is it? Ah, fuck, whatever. Anyway, clutch, mate. We're just talking about your new Mazda Beta. String bean here, by the way. Yeah. Um, Saying that everyone is a mechanic. Now, mate, I am a mechanic. I am a refrigeration mechanic. We've also said the air conditioning is not working. So I'll give you a qualified tip. Stop buying pieces of shit cars, you fucking idiot. Yeah. Love your work, boys. Catch ya. There is actually um, an explanation for this. As uh, most of you would know, if you're new here... Um, <laughs> Prepare to judge me if you want, but I literally take no offence to it at all because you're the fucking idiots that are riding pedals more than me. But um, I don't drive manual. Yeah, neither. So I'm actually in the process of getting another vehicle at the moment and um, I sold another one that I had and we've uh, purchased uh, another little ute in the meantime. So like we a stopgap. Yeah, it's a stopgap. We've just been waiting for some approvals to come through. So um, once that happens, I will have a lovely vehicle and you can turn around, go to bed with the mirror and wake up to yourself, Cone. <laughs> also, he didn't even give you any tips on the aircon. Yeah. Isn't that what he does? Isn't that what a fridgy mechanic does? Or oh, I could be completely wrong there. Yeah, well, I think that's what they do, but I don't think they know what they do either because how many times do you go to someone and they repair it and then they <laughs> fuck the cunt up? Yeah, it never works. Never works. Refrigeration mechanics, don't trust them. Can't trust them, except that bloke. Particularly if they're called string bean. We do love string bean, though. Yeah. Thanks for reaching out. Thanks, man. Clutzy's just a bit defensive because <laughs> you took a shot at him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a big weekend, but again, we'll cover that off on, on Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Hey, Mum. Hey, Dad. It's the uh, BWS bitch here. Hello, mate. Long time no see. Um, just thought I'd what do you want, call money? and give you a field report from the weekend. Um you know, ended up in the valley at uh, Retros. First nice. time in a couple of years at Retros. It's not bad. I was well in my work, well into the piece. And, you know, it got to that point in the night where you decide, fuck, I'm pretty blind. Do I stay or do I go? Now, I don't know what's happened to me, but I'm more of a, I'm more of a, fuck, I can't see straight. I can't walk. Let's go home. Anyway, mm. I remember hopping into an Uber and then I remember... 
nothing else. Um, <laughs> I, I woke up at 4.30 on the couch downstairs in my going out shit, and I was like, that's a bit odd, and I just went up to bed. And I woke up at 9, and my mum, bless her soul, has sent a message into the family group chat. My dumb ass fell asleep on the other side of the road out the front of someone's house. <laughs> and for unknown reasons, my mum woke up and found me there at 2 a.m. <laughs> I'll, I'll send you a photo of the message, but, yeah, my uh, I've been copping a lot of licks. Um, this isn't the first time I've fallen asleep in unknown locations, and it probably won't be the last. Anyway, <laughs> cheeks in your cheeks, and fuck you both. I don't know if I've never not made it to bed. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I've pretty much always made it to bed. Yeah. Um, I've definitely, I always fall asleep in the cab, do that just about every time I fucking go out. But I fell asleep in a bush outside the, um, it was only for like 15, 20 minutes while I was waiting for some mates to walk along the same road. Yeah. But I you sat down waiting coming. for, I knew they were coming, but I sat down waiting for them and fell asleep in a bush. Yeah, I don't think I've ever failed to get home. Yeah. Like get into bed at home. No, Even at my haven't. absolute worst, I've mm. I've made it back to bed. I yeah. do what I do like is the field report from the weekend. If we could yeah. keep those coming, I do like that. I was going to say there was one occasion where I, um, when I was still working at Miss K's, Strangs was trying to get an Uber back to Albany Creek. It was going to charge him two hundred and ten dollars, yeah. so I just knocked off. So I was like, "Oh, I'll drop you home, dude. Fuck yeah. that." Yeah, I think I've told this before. Anyway, I get a call from you on my way back from Albany. Creek. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, come round for a beer, bro. I was like, yeah, right. I went round, and you were sitting at your mum's old place in front of the post box, <laughs> just asleep on the fucking yeah, yeah, on the wall out the front. Yeah. I knew yeah. you were coming though. That's but then you were like, hey man, what are you doing here? <laughs> Did, I was like, that's... I'm coming to see you. It wasn't like, oh, I thought I dreamt that. Was yeah, <laughs> you thought you dreamt it. Yeah, that was after a Christmas party. And then I we think. went and had a couple of beers. Yeah. The other thing I love about that is um. He said there's a photo. So his mum's obviously got up at 2 a.m., found him and gone, I'm going to take a fucking photo of this. Yeah. We're going to need to see that BWS bitch. If it's not too incriminating, we'll put it on the Instagram story, but yeah. that's that's will have to be seen. That's so good. Moving on. Clots, Das, Greeny the Pomer. Hope you're well, boys. Day one of the ashes. Thought I'd uh, yeah call in and uh, give you a little dribble around cricket rather than rugby league for a change. Um, back in 2007... A man by the name of Steve Smith played for my local cricket club, Grappenall, up the Grappers. He lasted 24 hours after the boys got him absolutely leathered on the local juice. <laughs> and uh, on reflection, I've realised the reason is he didn't have long sleeves. You know that long sleeves is the key Ooh. to all success. Go well. Stuart Broad is a cheat. Who cares? We're going to win. Up the palms. Well, well, it's embarrassing hearing this now, Greeny. <laughs> Yeah, you. it's the day of, it's day five, about to kick off in an, in an hour basically yeah. from now. So th- is this the second test of the Ashes yeah, yeah, you called yeah, in yeah, for? Yeah, yeah, Oh, okay, after we won the first Oh, yeah, no, that was, that was from last week, so it was. Yeah, okay. So it's that, day one of the second test. Yeah, yeah. sweet. Yeah. After we won the first, first test, test in the home country of yeah, that's who's it. Yeah. hosting it yeah. um, in extraordinary fashion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Sweet, and we're today. Just, just wanted to clarify that as we're recording. We we're recording on Sunday, um, the night before this comes out, and it is day five of the Ashes, and we probably laid witness to one of the most heroic things I've ever seen on a cricket field last yeah. night, and basically the inspiration behind why we will go on to win it tonight. Yeah, exactly right. Like, um, shout out to Gary Lyon. Something I've realised. I don't know when that was that Steve Smith happened. Or f- actually, first of all, great use of the word leathered mm. in a cricket sort of story, mm. you know? Quite like that. I might like bring that into my vocab a little bit. Yeah. Because I just want to go get leathered at the Caxton. Yeah. Bruh. Um, but the other thing is, Smudge now wears long sleeves. Yeah, crazy. So, so I of- don't know if he realised after that outing, maybe, yeah. that uh, that was the key to success. It sounds like he came to his senses, basically. <coughs> yeah. Wise man. He's a wise man. Young smudge. Um, but lovely to hear from you, Greeny. The POM. Anyway, let's move on. Clutz and Das. How are we, boys? Well, Good thank boy. you, mate. How, How are, are you? I'm in my car at fucking five in the morning down here in freezing old Victoria. I just want to leave you a quick message. I'll take a couple of seconds of your time and for all the uh, froffies out there, hopefully you're all Australian, so you'll fucking enjoy this one. But fuck you, England, you bunch of pasty white 
fucking dirty rangers, mate. You cunts just don't get sport. You just don't get it. You got no fucking heart, and you got no fucking ticker. Five nil. Fuck off. <laughs> Also, if uh, Pat Cummins is listening to this uh, phone call, he is. Please reach out, Pat, and I'm sure I'll be one, not the only Australian boy or any man, woman, child in Australia right now who'll be saying this. But send me a DM, your phone number, whatever it may be, and I'll organise to suck your cock because you are the <laughs> fucking king of Australia, bro. You had the entire Australian on, Australia on your back, and you went, "Fuck this! I've got heart. I've got ticker. Boy, strap on and ride me." I'm my adrenaline is still pumping, and I'm like sitting here in shock, hanging my fucking words out. I'm being banished in my car by my missus because she's like, "You're being too fucking loud at four in the morning." But you know, all I want to say is, "Fuck you, England." Five nil. Fuck off. See you, boys. Later. <laughs> there's a lot in that. There's, there's a lot to a unpack lot. from there's, that. Yeah, there's a shit. Um, we were actually having this discussion yesterday, a bunch of us. Now, actually, sorry, on Friday night we're having this discussion. Baz ball, yeah, that sort of stuff. It's a great concept. It's, it's just a great un- concept. It's just unfortunate that out of probably the entirety of international teams that could imply and start using Baz ball, the most boring fucking country, yeah, has had to use it first. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, and I think as well, it's actually a smart plan. Like a lesser opponent, you yeah. pump them, and that's what they've been doing. Yeah, and all of a sudden they're up against. Well, the greatest 11 of all time, arguably. Yeah, arguably. If, I know this isn't the sports show, but we have to bring it up now yeah. you've said that. If we win the Ashes, when we win the Ashes over there, like, it'll probably go down as the greatest 11. Yeah. Which is fucked, considering what we grew up with. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Just step back, put your fucking hands on your hips and go, fuck. Yeah. And yeah, Paddy Cummins, if you're listening, mate, slide into our DMs and we can uh, link you up with that frothy out there. I'm sure he'll oblige and um, fulfil his his big call there. Yeah, he'll suck you. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> hey, boys, it's just a purse people pleaser here, and I'm calling in <laughs> regarding your Monday pod about not meshing sports stars. I totally agree. Unless your name fucking Ollie Robinson has that you fucking crap. <laughs> you cannot be talking that good of chat when you were bowling 125 kilometer an hour pies to Usman Daddy Kawaja. Fuck you, Ollie. Fuck everything you stand for. Up the Aussies. Fuck the Palms. Okay, you do raise a good point there as well. <laughs> That's a fair point. It is a fair point. I think we made our stance pretty clear on Ollie Robertson on the, the only Thursday thing that I disagree with that call. It wasn't even good chat. Yeah, he's got shit chat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The best thing, actually, what I've been loving most about this whole series is our Australian commentators have just been paying him out so much. Yeah. And, and pretty much everyone ability. in the media over here as well has been. I think it was like Michael Clark coming out being like, literally, if you had a. Full healthy Chris Wokes and you had um, Archer yep. as well and a couple other people. He's like, no one would know who you are. Yeah. Like, you wouldn't exist. Yeah. You yeah. also bowl yeah. slower than me, so. Exactly. It's That's, like. Don't fact check me on that, but just trust me. <laughs> we don't fact check. So no, we you, don't. You so bowl faster than We yeah. both. Yeah. Bowl faster. Not collectively either. Not, not collectively. We're not no, talking combined, no, no. combined pace. <laughs> Our combined pace, we bowl the fastest ball in history. <laughs> Absolutely. We, yeah. we genuinely would. Yeah, we would. Yeah. It'd be faster than a bullet train in fucking Japan. <laughs> Big time. Now, I don't know how fast they go these days, but, but all I know don't is fact it's check it. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Square up, Ollie. Anyway, let's move on. Jordan, Claps and Dars, Loose Moose here from the Mighty Waikato, Topity, New Zealand. Calling you from a free phone on the lovely Twin Waters. Currently here on a plumbing conference. Shout out to Dirty Plumbers. <laughs> Double the point of free phone went up one morning jog recovering from a splendid night at your mate's bowls pub. Love what you're doing, <laughs> bringing a win into the absolute backbone there to throw in bowls and suck them back a few wet ones. <clears throat> Remember, Klutz, poo goes downhill, payday's Wednesday. I wish you the best in finishing your apprenticeship. <laughs> Keep up the stellar work. Here's a gentle hang up from a free phone that I only ever dreamed I'd be able to lift the handle on. Love you. <laughs> 
What a call. Do you know what my favourite thing is? What? There's a fucking plumbing convention. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking see. Dude, dude, I, um, I, so when I listen to all the calls, I then add them to the run sheet when we mm. go through them and I have little notes for them all. Like the one before that was literally called Fuck You, Ollie Robertson. Yeah. And this one just says, great call. Because <laughs> that's what it was. It was a great call. Great, it had it all. Like, shout out the free phone. We haven't had free mm. phone in ages. We still yeah. get a few blind people just uh, ringing us up and bashing them, which is always good. Yeah, just remember, if, um, for those of you who don't know what the free phone is, uh, yeah. we started a campaign last year, which it's an ongoing campaign. We're still trying to get the attention of Telstra. Um, sorry, I've just been having a whole bunch of pizza. I'm um, <laughs> struggling to get my words here. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, yeah, we started this campaign against Telstra because they have these things called pay phones. But you don't pay for them anymore. They're free. They're literally free. You can call whoever the fuck you want for free. <laughs> yeah. So we're basically just trying to get as many people to call us on Telstra free phones. Call I, I phone. honestly reckon we would be the most dialed number in the Telstra Easily. free phone. Bank. Easily. If anyone has connections with Telstra, we've asked it before, and you could possibly get us a sponsorship with them. That'd be great. Yeah. It only makes sense. Mm. But yeah, plumbing convention. That's a Kiwi frothy, which is huge. Yep. Free phone, quiet hang up. Your mate's bowls club, which Your, I'd love to check long out. Long sleeves, drinking beers, like that call had it all. That tick, call tick, had tick, it tick, all. Tick, 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 tick. Like Maltese on the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking eyes. Let's move on. G'day, clubs. Darth, how are you? Good, good thank you, ball. You? Good, thanks. It's the Mergen Mustang here. Calling up in regards to a bit of a query, what would clubs do type thing. So we got in a conversation the other day at work, this bloke left his lunch in the freezer. Mm. Little did we know that he fr- makes sandwiches, freezes them, and then when it's time to pull them out of the freezer or have it for lunch, he thaws it out and eats it, says it's fresh ass. Rocked. Now what type of psycho does that? And then this lady was like, oh, I feel like uh, grilled bacon and mashed banana sandwich and i was like that's the wackest sandwich i've ever heard little did i know that another bloke yelled out saying yeah why don't you put cheese on it and i was like what the fuck is wrong with you people oh so just give me your thoughts i did suggest maybe putting syrup on those sandwiches because it might have been a canadian type sandwich but uh <laughs> turns out it's not so give me your thoughts because I think it's fucking terrible that you that pig sacrificed itself to be mushed with a fucking banana and then grilled. <laughs> so what would clubs do? Stay out of yourselves. When he, when he says grilled, do you think he means like like a toasty? Yeah, like literally like a toasty. Yeah, yeah right. That'd be so hot. Mushy banana like would get <sighs> fucking Dude, hot. I don't like. I'm kind that of intrigued all. by it. I remember my pop used to have banana sandwiches. Yeah, I've had banana sandwiches before mm. with honey, but not with bacon. But not it. with bacon and shit. No, nah, it's a little bit extra. But then you think um, it's just like crunchy and salty and like, would it taste good? I don't know, man. You know what? We might have to try There's, it. I think it's only one way to find out. Yeah. But I don't really want to find out at the same time either. <laughs> I kind um, of do though. Uh, see, that's like a little bit too far. But isn't that one of our um, rules of life? Yeah, like trying hectic stuff. Trying on, hectically on weird. Whatever's shit. the weirdest thing on the menu is, yeah. Yeah, well, that sounds like the weirdest <laughs> thing on the menu. But how can you justify a frozen sandwich being fresh? Yeah, that's weird. That is weird. That'd be so fucked. Yeah. I hate eating certain foods frozen. Sandwiches yep. would definitely be up there. Bread would be so good. Bro, shit. we ordered the other day for Smoko. It went down to the Japanese joint at Moray Field. Yep. Got a salmon sashimi pack. Yeah. Um, me and this other fella, Dan, got one each. And... He started eating his and he's like, what the fuck? It's frozen. I was like, Yuck. what? I was like, oh, explains why it took so long to cut it. And I was having it and it was like frozen fucking salmon bits. Fuck. Dude, I almost it's think, so I, I, I don't know if I haven't actually thought through this further than the last 15 seconds. So I could be completely wrong. Mm. But I don't know if there's a food that I would defrost and then eat like without heating it back up. You know what I mean? Mm. Like I obviously have eaten frozen things. Yeah, yep, I but feel like you are. But I cook them, you know what I mean? Like yeah. warm them up, don't just let them defrost and then eat them. Is that- The only things I could think of is like frozen fruits and shit like that. Like your berries yeah. and that sort of shit. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because I'm not yeah, yeah, them yeah. up again. I might yeah, I've had berries with like smoothie. yogurt and shit like that. Yeah, yeah that's actually yeah. fair. But apart from berries, I don't know if there's, there's anything- not anything else, no. That you would just let thaw out and eat, eh? No. No way. No, that'd be fucked. Yep, okay. Well, if there's anyone out there with some weird fucking other sandwich- 
um, recommendations, let us know because we may as well try that while we're trying the bacon as well. Yeah. Bacon and mashed banana. See how we go. Moving on. Yeah, not too bad. Thanks. Just freezing my tits off on the other side of the ditch. Um, anyways, just on your blokes here on about farts. So I woke up on Sunday morning after a big night out and walked out of my room to find the ceiling from a chicken pie all down our couch and caked onto the carpet. Oh. I then walked into the bathroom and see the brush is shot halfway down the toilet bowl. There's toilet paper everywhere. The toilet mat's upside down and there's shit smeared across the wall as well. Oh. I flip over the mat to then find shit on the mat. Anyways, later comes to find that my flatmate's cousin was the culprit. Oh. Even after we asked him if he did it and he denied it about five times and then he finally confessed. And I knew he did it because, well, to say I saw shit on his pants <laughs> when he jumped off, off the couch and walked away, that's when I knew he did it, but he still denied it. Um, anyways, he said to us that he got home from town, he was busting to take a shit, uh, but he decided to run to the bakery first and get himself a pie. <laughs> then proceeded to eat his pie on the toilet. Um, and anyways, when he was sitting on the toilet, he said he leant back, and as he leant back, he slipped off the toilet, um, skidding his ass cheeks down the front of the bowl, landing on the floor and covering his back in shit. Oh! So, yeah. Let me know if you folks have got any good yarns about people shitting themselves. Yeah. I still have so many questions about that. How, once that happened, like I don't, that probably might have happened if someone was drunk, falling off the toilet, sure. Yeah. How did he then proceed to go out to the couch and fall asleep with his pie? I don't get how pissed you are. Surely you're not fucking... Just if there's shit on the walls, it. you therefore think that maybe he's like put his hands down and he's got shit on his hands. Yeah, like Are you eating a pie with shit, shit on, on your, your hands? hands? Oh. Also, we do know that one of our rules of life is no eating on the shit. So it's yeah, already so fucked that you've like broken that. that rule of life. Yeah. Also, for something that heinous, yes, it's embarrassing, but there's no way you can deny no. doing that. No way. When there's evidence of shit on, on your, your fucking pants. pants. Um. I don't have any awesome stories about shitting my pants. No, I don't think I... I woke up one morning, actually, here, this is a pretty good one. Woke up, this was years ago. Um, my girlfriend was still living with her parents and <clears throat> I was still living with mine, but like stayed over at their place one night and everyone got up for work the next day. It must have been when I was at uni because I didn't have anything on. So I slept in mm. and then I got up at like, you know, whatever, eight o'clock. Everyone was out of the house, just me. And like was fully healthy the day before, not mm. sick or anything. Rolled over, tried to fart and just shit myself in her bed. And I proceeded <laughs> to have like the worst. It was when we all got like poisoned from that nightclub, remember? I like oh. went home and I was vomiting and diarrhoeing oh, for fucking yeah, like dude. three days. Yeah. It was fucked. Like, and all the boys got it. And yeah, I just woke up and trusted a fart. I shouldn't have all through my girlfriend's bed, which was awesome. Yeah, that's fucked. But other than that, I'd, I don't right. think, I, I think we've had this chat before. I don't think I've ever shit myself like when I'm not sick. Yeah. One of the boys from work, um, we do a lot of like QBCC work. So Which is- like, um, It's basically like insurance claims and shit like that. Yep. There's this builder we do it for. And um, one of the boys was waiting for him, uh, for this guy to rock up to open up the house. It was like a bit later in the day. Yep. And this dude was running late and just never, like he took forever to get there. And this fella had too much head noise about- um, Leaving and going to go to the toilet He was just going to hold on Until this guy got there But he didn't want to like fuck off And then make it look like he wasn't there And he ended up shitting himself <laughs> Waiting for this dude That's a commitment Yeah And I was like fuck man That is There's times where you just go Nah fuck this Gotta go But There is one Really really bad horror story mm. I think we've spoken about it on the podcast before Years ago at Splendor. Oh, yeah, yeah. One of our friends. We won't name him, but one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. We just had this mate who just sent it so much harder than everyone else. As always. On one of the first nights. Might have been the Friday night. We had a massive group camping at Splendor. I remember waking up and he was like, we had this big communal tarp and then there was a walkway and all of our tents on the other side. Mm. I remember waking up in the morning and he was in the walkway asleep and someone had put one of those like, Alfoil blankets over him I was like holy fuck That's so funny And a medic walked past At like 10am He'd been in, out in the sun For like hours Yeah I was like oh, Has anyone checked If he's breathing We're like holy shit no <laughs> Went over and checked And he was awake uh, Not awake but alive 
Anyway, eventually we moved him into the shade. He eventually gets up, and I remember I was sitting at the big long table we had in our tarp, and he was opposite me, and he's just standing there like swaying side to side, still so <laughs> fucked. And our mate Ben was behind him, and Ben's like, "Don't sit down, don't sit down." And I remember him turning around to look at Ben, and Ben's like, "You've shit yourself." <laughs> and he looked back at me, and he's looking at me right in the eyes, and just like wiped his bum with his hand and went. <laughs> like, shrugged his shoulders like I have And remember he had that tiny little fucking um, oh, Like his tent I, I wasn't there I was oh, back up in there? Brisbane oh. And we heard it on Triple J Yeah so he had this tiny little It was like a fucking teepee almost Tiny little one man tent And he just sprinted for it He's still fucked from the night before <laughs> Sprinted for it And he jumped in And he has long hair And his hair got stuck <laughs> in the zipper So he's actually rolling around Covered in his own shit Hair cut in the zipper Stuck in the zipper. Someone got scissors, took a huge chunk out of his hair, and he just got naked in his tent and was like throwing baby wipes out, all covered in shit. People like gathering around laughing. And anyway, he ended up like getting himself cleaned up, had a shower. The next morning, he didn't sleep in his tent that night. The next morning, I got up and he was dragging his whole tent and all of his belongings <laughs> from there into the rubbish tip. He's just everything. He's like, fuck this, and left it there. It was disgusting. It was yeah, disgusting. He's, he's, was the shit only, he's the only bloke I could see doing that as well. Yeah, and yeah, made it onto the radio. They were like, oh, we heard someone fucking shit themselves at Splendor. Anyway, moving on. Yeah, clutch, dust, problem of the earth, over here. Not bad, thanks. Uh, just ring up, fellas. Just bloody, me and boys went down to Breeze of Vegas there a couple of weeks ago. We just rooted a boys trip for the weekend for the PBR, State of Origin, the bull riding turnout, and uh, went down night early and uh, called into this so-called Caxton Hotel you guys speak so highly of. And wow, boys, I am honestly very, very impressed. Mm. Yeah, come from a little no-name town, famous for the fucking slice of fucking watermelon, um, also famous for, yeah, meth heads. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I was quite blown away by the appearance of the caco, uh, the service, the food, mate, fuck me dead. Price-wise, that place is smick. Um, yeah, very good weekend, boys. Um, glad we took the advice and wheeled into the mighty caco. Um, yeah, didn't get any blokes down our throat, but we did vendor, uh, venture across the road. Um, ended up in a hive. Uh, no one got stung. Um, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, boys, buddy, dangerous weekend in Brisbane. Uh, bit of caco, a bit of the beehive across the road, a bit of, um, Bit of casino antics and, uh, yeah, just deleting a few paychecks. But anyway, boys, <laughs> no, love your stuff, boys. Been listening to pod for a few years and, uh, yeah, no good stuff, fellas. Thanks for the recommendation. Any other cunt out there wanting to go to the caco that's not from the area, fucking do it. Do yourselves a favour. As the boys say, the best pub in all the lands. Righto, boys. Pumba out. See yous. Fucking oath, Pumba. Yep. <clears throat> That is such a great summary. Yeah. Um, the thing that got me there, it's actually like a little plug for the CACO. As you all know, we come live from the CACO. We do. We have done for years now. Um, we always do. <clears throat> I actually came here with my footy team, some of the boys from footy on Friday. Um, talk about it more on Wednesday. But when we had dinner, we all got the steak special. Mm. Twenty three ninety for a 300 gram rump steak with chips and salad with the purchase of a drink. Bang. So you're getting a steak for under 30 bucks and you're already going to get a drink anyway. We, is that, we had that on last we, week. We get Thursday, that. Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. yeah. And then they did the same thing up here with a rump and a porterhouse. I think the porterhouse is 27 dollars Yeah. But unreal. Like, we were having the same chat. You can't get steaks for less than 30 bucks. You can here, At bud. a pub, but you can at the caco. And they're fucking awesome. And, like, we don't get paid to say this shit like no it's genuinely such a good feed and you're hearing it from other people as well also yep. love the use of the term uh deleting paychecks yeah and glad you'll survive the beehive across the road um the beehive has stung many a man it has for those who don't know what's across, across the road from the caxton hotel google oh. honeybees yeah and come find out yourself yeah google honeybees safe search off <laughs> what do you reckon would um would win in a fight does what the honey bee or a kitten Oh, tough call. Honeybees often travel in packs. Yeah. Kittens, though. Kittens are ferocious. Very ferocious. Very ferocious, but they're deceptive. The Battle of Caxton Street. Yeah. It's fuck. almost as big as Origin. I would love to see I've never been to honeybees, but I've been to kittens. No, I've never been to that one. Yeah. I, where's when the other it was one? where kittens Oh, was. yeah. 
way back when we were a lot younger. I haven't been to Kitten since last week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still rocked by that, yeah, to be fucks, honest. Fucks, fucks, fucks. Yeah. Clutch, Darts. How are you now? Well, thanks. Good ball and you? Yeah, yeah. Not so bad. <laughs> so I got, a, I got a question for you here. It's, um, you got a three-course meal. You got all of the, you got Red Rooster, KFC, Macca's, Hungry Jacks. What are you doing? Me, personally, I'm probably doing a bit of a hot take here, but I'm probably going on a good day, chips from Red Rooster. I'm going a burger from HJ's. And I'm going... I'll go an entree from... Probably KFC. Pepper mayo slider. Hope you don't have too much head noise after Origin, boys. Um, you looked pretty second-hand when I was waiting for you in the cab rank after Origin. <laughs> Darth? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jeeps in your cheeks, give them apes. They'll be diving in and out. Sound like a free phone. <clears throat> it did sound like a free phone. Now, um, first of all, I don't remember anything in the cab rank after Origin, so whatever I said, forget I said it. Unless I was being nice. Yeah. Because I meant it. <laughs> now, obviously, if we're having a three course meal, we just have my Domino's, Josh. Yeah, 100%. We've like, covered that 100%, off, obviously. Uh, we have covered that off, but. When you can get a pizza and two sides. Well, the good thing is you can get a side and a dessert as your second side. Yeah. Go but have a drink as well. If we're going those four, yeah, I don't like entrees a tough one. I think, and I'm guessing by three course he means entree, chips, and burger because that's what he said. Yeah, it sounds like like it. that was the example he gave. Yeah. I'm going KFC burger. <laughs> yeah, I actually might do the same thing: KFC burger, Red Rooster chips. But then what entree are you having from HJ's? Tough one. There really is none. That's why I'm going to go a burger from HJ's. Okay. Chips uh, from Red Rooster and then what? Chips from, from Red Rooster. That's actually not <coughs> a bad shout. And a pepper mayo slider. <laughs> yep. So by default, like KFC is probably my favourite burger, but by default you go HJ's because KFC have the better entree options. Yeah, I'd probably get some sort of popcorn chicken, maybe even some Wicked Wings. Mm, that's it. But... um. Yeah, fuck. I think that's what I'd go. Me too. Mm. Right, well, that's all we've got time for this week, frothies. Thanks for listening, guys. Um, yep. Appreciate. Oh, fuck. Jesus Christ, I'm struggling. Um, yep. We will get into that on the Wednesday pod. Yeah, it was a big weekend. It was a big weekend. My throat's a little bit horse. rough and hoarse. Yeah. Um, if you want to know why, go check out a video we posted on Instagram. <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> If you have a weak stomach, you're not going to see anything, but you'll fucking you'll hear, hear it. it. <laughs> you'll hear it. And to that fuckwit that said that it was fake and that I'd had a big night, it was it was 6.30 and I posted a clip because we've had this challenge running since last week. Yeah. Um, and I didn't want to lose, so I had to get some sort of filming evidence on yep, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More than um, enough evidence, I think. Yeah. We'll get into that on Wednesday, though. Yeah, we will. Um, yeah, thanks for listening. Tune in on Wednesday to hear all about it and hear about this... Uh, Supposed boxing biff that's coming up. Yeah, fucking nice. Give us a call for next week and bye for now. Bowling.